Good morning, y'all, y buenos dias. So for today's video, I wanted to share a couple of tips on how to raise bilingual children. So if you're interested, then keep on watching. So for those of y'all who don't know, my name is Jen Rivera Bell and I have two kiddos and we are raising them bilingual, both speaking Spanish and English. And so for us, it was kind of a no brainer. We speak Spanish and my family all speaks Spanish. And so I felt like that was just a obvious thing to go along with. There are so many people in my family who don't speak English fluently and so if I hadn't taught my children Spanish they would literally not be able to communicate with my grandparents and aunts and uncles and so I thought that would just be extremely unfair and again to us it's just the logical next step and so for both of our kiddos I only speak to them in Spanish. There are a couple of things where we'll switch it around. Like obviously if I'm reading a book that's in English, it'll be in English. But for the majority of the time for basically everything that I'm telling them, it's always going to be in Spanish. And again, this is gonna vary from household to household if you are not a native speaker. But for me, the tip number one is expose them as often as you can. So tons of people ask me, well, you know, I'm not a native speaker and I don't speak it fluently, so what do I do? Whatever it is that you do know, show them that. If you only know your colors and numbers, count and say the colors in whatever language it is that you're trying to expose them to because oftentimes our fear blocks us from doing what it is that we're actually trying to do. So if you have a very limited vocabulary, expose them to that, expose them to whatever amount it is that you know, because they're gonna pick up on that so quickly, which is my other tip, which is expose them as young as possible. It is a common misconception that children will get confused or will mix up the languages or all of these things when it comes to speaking two languages. And y'all, the human brain is amazing. Our brain was wired for language. And so it is incredible the amount of language and the variety of languages that children can learn at such a young age and with such ease. And sure, there will be times where certain words might get confused or maybe conjugations will get confused, but for the most part, children will pick up languages and are able to divide those very, very easily in their brain. There's so many moments where Luna kind of showcased that for us at such a young age. Like she knew that with Zach's family, just by looking at them, like she knew which family members spoke in English and which family members spoke in Spanish. And so it was amazing to see, you know, her going to her papa and speaking in English and then her going to her abuela and speaking in Spanish because she knew, oh, this person speaks Spanish, this person speaks English, and she knew which words to use with which. And so it's amazing the capacity that human brains have for language. So do not fear, your child will be able to pick it up and will be able to differentiate. My next tip is make friends with someone who speaks that language that you're trying to teach them. So for us, it would be Spanish. So finding Spanish speakers um, that are local to your area that are able to talk to your child. Because when it comes to language development, so much of it comes from the back and forth. Oftentimes we forget that because we think that maybe with flashcards or something like that, it'll be easier when obviously exposing them in any way is amazing, but having that back and forth is really, really key. And so for us, we do that with my mom FaceTiming the kids. So they have FaceTime time cut out every single day where they just chat about whatever it is that they wanna talk about and you know, Wa just asks them about what they ate that day, you know, what were they doing, and Luna will bring coloring sheets, and it's all in Spanish because she knows that Abuela only speaks in Spanish to her. And so having that person or having multiple people that only speak that language to them is so, so awesome. Another tip is learn words or phrases that you think that they would really enjoy. So what are things that they gravitate to? What are things that they really enjoy? And obviously these all depends on the ages of your child, and this would be geared more towards older or children, um, but figure out things that they're really, really into sayings or, you know, like catchphrases. Usually kids go through like a catchphrase phase. And so figure out what that phrase is in whatever language it is that you're trying to expose them to. And they'll pick up that really, really quickly because it is something that they already enjoy anyways. Another tip is sticky notes. And again, this varies from age to age. Um, you don't want to be putting sticky notes where little babies can stick them in their mouths. But for middle kids and older kids, um, this is a really fun tactic to put 
sticky notes with the name of whatever it is. And this even works for pre-readers. When they see that, they'll know that you're trying to expose them to some, something else. So they might even ask like, what is this? And you could be like, oh, that's a ventana. Window in Spanish is ventana. And just that repetition because language really is all about repetition. My next tip is expose them in as many ways as possible. And I think that this is probably one of the easier things to do. We watch movies only in Spanish. If we're ever watching a TV show, it's only in Spanish. If we're playing games, we make them in Spanish. And so having all of these really fun activities that kids already like to do and just making them in the language that it is that you're trying to expose them to is just awesome. I know that Netflix and Disney Plus has tons of shows and movies that are dubbed over in multiple different languages. And so that's an easy way to expose them to something that they might already be enjoying doing and just adding that extra language in it. My next tip is celebrate the progress. Even if it seems like it's going by super, super slow, make sure you're encouraging, make sure that it's something fun because you definitely don't wanna make it into this downer like work style thing because the children aren't going to be as hype about it. My next tip is Homeschool Spanish Academy. So this is a program that Luna's been doing for a couple of months now and she absolutely loves it. So we love our teacher, Maestra Vicky, and it's completely virtual. So it's really great for people who don't have access to Spanish speakers in their area like we do. Being that we're in a very rural area, we don't get to benefit from the finding friends who speak Spanish tip. And so the way that I kind of weaseled my way around that is through the Spanish Academy. And it's so awesome. And what I love about the Homeschool Spanish Academy is that it's completely customized to your kiddo. And so for us, being that Luna's already bilingual, she doesn't have to do the traditional like super vocabulary driven program. And so it's much more of a conversational pace. And I feel like that is super, super beneficial to her. She ends up learning so many amazing new words words that we might typically not be using because so much of our Spanish is home base. You get what I'm saying? And so they get to talk about things that maybe we aren't talking to her about. And again, Maestra Vicky is the best. And so I'll put the link down below to the Homeschool Spanish Academy. And that way y'all can try it out because I have seen so many amazing benefits from it. And I feel like when it comes to learning a new language, that back and forth of talking with someone, it's probably the number one factor. And my last tip for raising bilingual kids is make sure that you are modeling that behavior. Make sure that you are speaking in that language as often as possible and with as many people as possible. Because again, when it comes to anything, modeling behavior is one of the key factors when it comes to teaching little ones. If they see our behavior and are being exposed to it as often as possible, they're gonna pick up on that. And so by us speaking that language as often, even if we're talking like out loud to ourselves, um, I think that it's super critical for them to be able to hear and be exposed to that language as much as possible. All right, those are my tips for today. I hope that y'all enjoyed. If y'all have any comments, comments or questions, shoot them down below. If y'all have any other tips that y'all think are really, really key for raising bilingual children, leave them down below. Tlaxcomati for watching and I'll talk to y'all later.